I want to bring you back to when Nintendo was on the TV. Game commercials were one thing, but I'm talking about shows. When Nintendo actually used to make shows based on their games. Those were the times. There was Captain N, all the Mario shows, and my favorite by far, Zelda. This was part of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which was already like two shows in one. You had the live action segments with Mario and Luigi in their Brooklyn home being visited by random guest stars. Then the animated segment begins, which is the main part of the show, and then it goes back to live action. And in the credits, it's the famous Do the Mario, which I totally did as a kid because I thought it was so hilarious, especially that last part where he kind of trips a little. You got to get that in there. That's like part of the dance. It aired every weekday, but on Fridays, instead of a Mario cartoon, it was Zelda. I looked forward to that every week. It made Fridays even more awesome. There were only 13 episodes, and after they were done, they replayed them all again in the same order, so it was a constant loop. I remember I once missed an episode, and I had to wait 13 weeks for them to play it again. Both the Mario and Zelda shows were beyond satisfying. It was amazing seeing our favorite games made into shows. It was far more faithful than the Super Mario Bros. live action movie. Here it seemed like all these wacky stories they invented could have actually existed inside the worlds of the games. We only had a couple Mario and Zelda games at the time. If they made a show today, the source material and the conflicting preferences of all the fans would be overwhelming. But it's still surprising to me that they never gave it another shot. So all we have is this. There's no other standard, nothing to compare. Today, I only seem to hear negativity towards it, but I don't understand what the complaints are. It was targeted towards kids. I was a kid and I approved, so I took another look as an adult to see if it's really as bad as everyone says. As you'll hear in the intro every single time, the premise is that Ganon is trying to steal the Triforce of Wisdom from the Kingdom of Hyrule. He already has the Triforce of Power, and if he gets both, he will rule the land. Each episode revolves around Link and Zelda defending the castle, fighting off the monsters, and arguing like a married couple. Link is given a lot of personality. Just think, at the time, this is all you had to work with, an 8-bit character in a game who never speaks. The personality they gave him is that of a feisty teenager, which is exactly what I imagine Link to be like. He's full of energy, he's craving adventure, um, the things he does are heroic, but he likes to complain and is a bit defiant, sort of like Bruce Campbell in Army of Darkness, which came later. Even though he always saves Hyrule, he seems to be doing it for his own fun and to get a kiss from Zelda. That's his main goal. The entire series, he's trying to get her to kiss him, and every time he gets a chance, they're interrupted. I can see this being annoying because it's the same dumb joke repeated constantly. Of course, there's his catchphrase. I'm sure you know what it is. It's more of a meme now, but if you see it in context, it's actually really funny in the first episode. Link defends the castle from a group of moblins, but in the fight, lots of things are broken but he saves the castle. Then Zelda pops in and complains the room is a mess, and then Link says, excuse me, princess. It's well-timed, but with any good thing, they didn't know when enough was enough. He says it a lot. I mean, a lot, like more than once per episode. But then it starts to get funny again because you're always expecting it to come. Like, how many times are they gonna do that? And sometimes he misses a beat. Zelda will set it up, and then you wait for it, and then you think, oh, maybe he's not going to say it this time. But then he says it, and it keeps getting more and more drawn out, like, excuse me, princess. Zelda is also given a lot of personality. She's strong and aggressive and gives Link an equal match. She joins him in lots of the battles. She isn't there just to be rescued. Sometimes it comes to that. But often, she's in the front lines with Link on the adventure and even saves him sometimes. They're a pair. She doesn't put up with Link's shit, not hesitating to punch him in the face, and sometimes goes even more extreme. While he's sleepwalking across a tightrope to her bedroom window, she throws a drink in his face, which almost causes him to plummet to his death. 
Then there's the fairy, Sprite, who's in love with Link. She pesters him the same way he pesters Zelda. She even intrudes on him when he's taking a bath. I think there's a lot of comedy potential in this. A small fantasy being who's hopelessly infatuated with a regular-sized human. Ganon is a goofball. It seems like they couldn't make up their mind if he was supposed to be scary or funny. For a kid's cartoon, he is a little bit intimidating, but he offsets it by acting like a clown. The moment that stands out to me is when he demonstrates to the Stalfos how he wants them to punch Link. <laughs> like he's just throwing punches in the air, like get him like this. <laughs> Keep in mind, before this, there existed hardly any depictions of Ganon. There were only two games, which he only appeared briefly in, so they almost had to invent this character from scratch. Tons of enemies from the game make appearances. There's Moblins, Tektites, Octoroks, Armos, Zolas, Vyres, Stalfos, Gariahs, Gibdos, Goma, and Gliok. I'd say they did a pretty good job including so many of them and they all look like they're supposed to. There's a lot of action in the show, which are its best moments. Whenever Link and Zelda are fighting the monsters, it's a lot of fun. It's just like the game. Link shoots beams of light at his sword. When enemies are zapped, they disappear. The show invents the idea that the enemies reappear inside a glass jar in Ganon's headquarters. Sometimes enemies leave behind items, again, just like the game. Here, Link calls it loot, and it also explains how he's able to fit so many items in his pouch. They shrink. When he's fighting the Gliok, they even go as far to have the disembodied heads chase after Link. This is something that could have been simplified, but they decided to make it just like the game, which I respect. Nowadays, there's always more pressure to get farther away from the source material for the sake of making it slightly more believable. All these action scenes are peppered with sound effects from the actual game, which I think is beautiful. It's so satisfying to see Link zap those monsters and hear the actual sounds, just like you're watching the game. Also, there's the music. You have the Zelda theme, which is awesome. I can't believe I have to point that out. Like, why wouldn't it have the theme? But they never do that now, because now theme songs are so taboo for some fucking reason. So what's wrong with the show? For a kid, not much. For a cynical adult, and don't worry, that counts lots of us, the writing is the part that I think is bad. The dialogue can make you cringe. Um, you have lines like, One more zap in your history, Ganon. That's a zap you won't make, Link. And, you know, it's not the worst line, but it's not great. And what do you know, they use that line twice. There's a lot of recycling. But I do have to give it credit for teaching me some vocabulary as a kid. It's strange, but when I watch these old shows, there's sometimes words that stick out, and I remember, wow, that's when I first heard those words. This show taught me the word improvise, and taught me to distinguish between the words simple and easy. Even though the writing's nothing great, I think of it as mainly an action show. Now let's breeze through all 13 episodes. 1. The Ringer. Ganon tries to steal the Triforce, and Zelda and Link work together to fight him off. This is pretty much the whole show in a nutshell, which I think is a good thing if you're planning to only see one, this is the one to see. Lots of good co-op action with Link and Zelda, and it sets up all the characters and tropes. Number 2. Cold Spells. Link hates cleaning, so he fakes being sick to get out of his chores. Not much to take away, but it's a good sprite episode. Number three, the White Knight. This is my personal favorite. There's another hero who comes into the picture and steals Link's thunder. This is Prince Facade. He's more proper, high class, a real cocky, arrogant piece of shit, and Zelda likes him. It really makes you root for Link, and then you find the biggest flaw in Prince Facade. He doesn't like to get dirty. He won't go through a swamp to save Zelda, so Link has to come in and show him how it's really done. I love it when he puts facade in his place. 4. Kiss and Tell. Link gets turned into a frog and whines the whole time. If you ever thought he was annoying, well, imagine him with a froggy voice. 
One of my lesser favorites, um, still good for some chuckles. Five, sing for the unicorn. Yeah, for some reason, Ganon rides on a unicorn here. He captures Zelda's dad, the king, and Link has to help her rescue him. Lots of good action here. Six, that sinking feeling. Ganon's using a magnet to pull shit from above ground, causing big sinkholes. Link and Zelda have to go down to the depths to fight Ganon. Not much to say, just a straightforward linear adventure starting above ground and going deeper into Ganon's lair. Seven, doppelganger. Definitely the first time I ever heard that word. It's all about an evil Zelda who kidnaps the real Zelda and tricks Link. I remember my dad pointed out that one of the lines was ripped off Ghostbusters. That's a new look for you, isn't it? But nowadays, isn't that all everybody does is quote Ghostbusters? 8. Underworld Connections The Triforce of Wisdom gets blown to pieces and Link and Zelda have to track down the pieces. Only thing I can say about this one is stairs. There's lots of stairs going every which way like a surreal painting. 9. Stinging a Stinger There's this crooked dealer, Sleeznose, selling people bad stuff. After Link gets cheated, he and Zelda use Sleeznose to help them against Ganon. Not a particularly memorable one. 10. Hitch in the Woods Ganon puts Zelda under a spell and tries to marry her. The best part I remember is Link trying to get out of his chores again. 11. Fairies in the Spring Link and Zelda are attacked by a bunch of water monsters. This one disappointed me as a kid because it's the only episode that doesn't have Ganon or any of the usual monsters. But I did find the water monsters to be pretty cool. 12. The Missing Link Link becomes a ghost of some sort and only Zelda can see him. I always liked this one. It's funny seeing Link goofing around as a ghost. The only thing that bugged me is that the rules were never clear. He's not supposed to be able to touch anything. Solid objects pass through him. But how does he hit the ground? Uh, he even touches Zelda's shoulder at one time. 13. The Moblins are revolting. Nothing special for the finale. It's just about Ganon's army getting tired of him and trying to take over Hyrule on their own and finding out the job was tougher than they thought. The funniest part is the end when Ganon comes back and makes them all lick the floor. <laughs> Final comments. It's an entertaining show. Even today, it's still fun to watch. The nostalgia factor is through the roof. It's not Emmy Award winning material, and it probably isn't that special now, but in almost 30 years, it's still the only Zelda show. Do the Mario take one step, and then again, come on, and then you're doing the Mario take one step.